He hooked me in Bristol the week before, showed no remorse and ran his mouth. You open the door. You've had run-ins over the years with fellow drivers. It's gotten better though, um, <laughs> and you've acknowledged that. Uh, how so? For one, the sport has changed, and two, I have changed. Uh, not necessarily on the racetrack for me, but how I've handled situations post-race uh, has gotten a lot better. Um, and I've also been around for 15 years now in a couple championships, and that changes a lot too. So, so like, um, like what changes in, in you that causes you to act differently? Well, I think if you look at the sport, when I first came in, I was considered the most aggressive driver on the racetrack. And I was. Now, I'd say I'm average when it comes to aggression. Not because I changed, I, I'm not any less aggressive than I was, but it's that that mentality has been adapted from a lot of the field and especially the younger guys that have come in since then, right? I came in against the guys who were established that had been there for a while. They had this give and take rule that, that, you know, on restarts, they weren't like going three, four wide. They weren't making the big, bold moves. <laughs> like if you threw a block, it was like, I can't believe you did that to me, right? Now it's accepted. You throw a block, it's like, yeah, yeah well, throw a block, no big deal, right? Like, it's, the game has changed. So a lot of the off-track, post-race altercations go away because it's accepted uh, a little bit. Like, to, to me, I mean, it's simple, right? Everyone talks about this, this unwritten rule of, of driver etiquette and, and what is that? And, and everyone probably has a different one. To me, it's, you wreck me, I wreck you back. Right, that's, that's what it's gonna be. Uh, and, and if I wreck someone, I expect it back. Just part of it, mm -hmm. um, as, it as it should be, right? It's self-policing that way. Your dad, Tom, who's been hugely successful in his own right, used to get in your ear when you were younger and tell you to go after people. Like, uh, explain why. <laughs> yeah, he did. Um, I will say I have regrets on the way I did, did some of that. I wear my emotions on my sleeve. At that point in time, if I tell Joey to run through a brick wall, he'd run through a brick wall. If I tell Joey, go, go over there and fight Kevin Harvick, he'll go over there and fight Kevin Harvick. And I was a, I was a jackass, without a doubt. And I learned a lot. I love my dad. <laughs> I love my dad. He's got a, a, a huge heart and he's really, really smart. But there's also a point where you have to let your kids figure it out and fight their own fights. The stupidest thing I ever did was we were running Hooters Pro Cup in Florida, and they called some penalty on Joey or whatever, and I went to the official on Pitt Road, and the tower is up there, you know, so he's got his headset on. You tell them this, this, and the guy goes, I ain't telling them nothing. Well, I ripped the headset off the guy's head. I put the headset on me, and I yelled at the tower direct. I mean, it don't get much dumber than that, you know? <laughs> I could have ruined his career. I was that stupid his emotions are boom he's he's emotional like i am right and he's boom he's in the middle of it right and and now you got dad there fighting with you in a professional sport like yeah and and i can't shake that especially these days it's, it can't be forgotten it lives on youtube okay here's a, a more consequential one he implied uh you know when denny hamlin got the injury where he busted his back that he felt like because of him getting people riled up that something he did played into that? Looking back at that, what do you do differently? I don't know how different it honestly looks. Um, he hooked me in Bristol the week before, showed no remorse and ran his mouth. You open the door. And wouldn't you have it that we're racing for the win the next week? All right, so now you got someone that wrecked you and showed no respect to you or no remorse about the situation and actually talked more crap about it after he wrecked you. And now you're racing for a win, you're going in the final corner. The next week, what are you gonna do? Well, I know one thing, he's not winning, right? Like, <laughs> if I'm not winning, he's not winning. <laughs> That's for sure. I, I don't think I changed that. I don't change that part of it. Roger called me that night and he said, I got Joey's, I got Joey back, don't worry about it. He, he did what he had to do and we're proud of him. And that was the beginning of everybody realizing we're not pushing Joey Logano around anymore. He's going to start pushing back. I was an old Italian, you know, you're, that's my boy, you know, you're going to fight back. That's what we do. So if Denny issue, came up to me and said been... after Bristol and said, hey man, I screwed up. I didn't mean to get into yeah. you, you know, whatever. I would react different, right? It kind of goes to the same thing like I had the Kenza thing, right? And that was in 2015. We had the best year of my career going uh, as far as wins. Won three in a row. We were going for three wins in a row. Um, 
in Kansas. He fenced me, went in the next corner and said, you're not fencing me, eye for an eye, right? So I hooked him. And my, I would not change any of that part at all, right? Like, I know what happened in the car, Matt knows what happened in the car. I wouldn't have changed any of that. What I should have done differently is post-race talk to Matt and explain to him my side of the story. Maybe we could have gotten to the bottom of it. Fast forward a few years, right? So then he retaliates in, in Martinsville, wrecks me, takes us out of the championship four in a year that we probably should have won the championship. Most dominant car, at least, to, throughout the playoffs. And you fast forward two, three years after that, Matt and I had a conversation about what happened. And I explained to him, just like I explained to you, you put me in the wall, so you opened the door. And he understood that. And he said, man, I wish we had this conversation before Martinsville. I <laughs> said, me too. And because of not what I did on the racetrack, what I didn't do off the racetrack, it cost me a championship. And now I gotta live with that the whole life, right? It's a very expensive lesson to learn, <laughs> but I learned it.